Today, finally, after waiting so many years of my life, we are finally heading to, for most of our first times, except for King's Dominion, folks. Everybody has been asking me, Avery, have you ridden I-305 yet? It's one of the best coasters in the world. Well, I'll be finally riding today, folks. We got some few people here today, the same folks as last year. Hey, guys. Me and his first time. This my first time, I Mikey's first time, and his first time as well. I threw a class to be my, one, my 100th coaster also, so this is a pretty big day for me. Now, Matt, how many times have you been to King's Dominion so far? Uh, this is going to be my third visit of, uh, actually my fourth visit of my life. Wow. So you've already went quite a bit times already. Yeah. At last, we finally made it to King's Dominion, and I gotta say, these fountains look really cool right now. And way straight ahead is the Eiffel Tower, which we will see in a better shot later on. There is Berserker, which is the upside down pirate ship ride. As far as I know, I've always wanted to ride those kind of models. I think I did it at Carowinds actually, if I'm not mistaken. But our first attraction will be Dominator. And I hear nothing but good things about that being m Forest, folks. That thing looks massive. All right, our first attraction is gonna be Reptilian, and this is a mock bobsled. This is gonna be my first ever mock bobsled. The only one I've ridden is an intimate one at the Great Escape called Alpine Bobsleds. This was formerly known as Avalanche, and they just recently themed like a jungle area when Tumili just opened, so this shall be interesting. All right, everybody, we just did Reptilian for the first time, and I gotta say, for a mock bobsled, it was actually pretty good. What'd you guys think? It was fun. It was my first ever bobsled, actually. How about you, Matt? It was pretty fun. And how about you? This was actually really fun. Honestly, I love these bobsleds. <laughs> I gotta say, I was in second to last. You were in the very last row, and yeah. you got a lot of good positive Gs in the last, like, helix section. Well, I wouldn't say this ride a lot of positive Gs, but I think this is, like, the turn, or, like, these wave turns. They're just generally really fun. Like, and also, the seating position is, of course, really unique. Just because of how the coaster is and how the train is. I really, I, I don't know. I like, I really like this. <laughs> Great family coaster. Oh, definitely. Probably, probably the best ever. I don't know. I'll and then, about that. Now, Tumili just opened, and that's an SNS free spin. I haven't ridden an SNS free spin, actually. I think it might have even been before the pandemic or 2021. I don't remember, but we're about to do Tumili next. All right, guys, we just got off to Mealy, and I gotta say, it was actually not that bad. Now, my friend Will has been on to Mealy, and he absolutely hated it. Like, he had, like, his neck snapped or something, and not gonna lie, that first flip, it felt like I was about to hit my head, but I think I braced myself for that, so. But other than that, though, very solid flips. Definitely one of the better SNS free spins I've ridden for sure. How was that, guys? It, it was okay. I, I prefer a great adventure to go through like uh, like I, I went out upside down, but it wasn't a three, full 360 flip. It was okay. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It wasn't smooth, but it wasn't brutal. And I got like two and a half to three flips. It was fun. I don't really know if I see myself riding it again. How about you, Jay? It was actually really fun for me. Um, so honestly, uh, I don't, I wasn't counting how many flips I got, but I think it was maybe at least three. Um, and also, each force, whether or not it swings you back and forth, definitely swings you quite hard. So it gives some great forces, great hang time. It kind of has you going like, whoa, whoa, and multiple times. <laughs> yeah. And um, pretty intense yeah, for so an it was SNS. Actually really fun. But I also should say that um, I also did try holding my head straight with my neck straight too, and that was to intentionally avoid of um, hitting my head on, on the, the train because um, I had a friend who rode this and he considers this one of the worst coasts he's ever been on because he hit his head once really nasty on this. So that gave me a heads up that I got to be aware of that. I luckily did not hit my head, but I can imagine though. You were definitely you're lucky trying, this time, Well, Yeah, but wait, I cannot imagine. But here's the thing though, if you do try to hit your head on this, it's going to be a very nasty hit. So definitely try to keep your head straight. Oh yeah. Now, our next attraction is going to be Anaconda. Now, a lot of people say this is a mixed bag, so 
Many say it's really brutal. Many say they don't mind it. I didn't mind Steam and Demon the last couple times I was at Great Escape, despite many enthusiasts really hate on that ride. But I'm really excited for Anaconda only because of the first drop where you go underwater, underground tunnel into the first vertical loop and it actually looks very intense. And the line queue is pretty cool actually for its time. Here it goes. Wow. All right, everybody, we just got off Anaconda and let me tell you, what are you guys talking about? It's not even that rough. I feel like you just need to know how to ride arrow loopers. I put my head forward and I feel like that really did the trick. I thought the first drop was actually very jarring because it is like rough, but it gives you a lot of forces. I really love the tunnel as well where you go underwater and the first vertical loop was very solid. The corkscrew was very slow towards the end, but really good hang time. There were some jarring moments, but it's not as bad as people claim it out to be. So what did you think, Matt? Uh, it was all right. It's, it's not a terrible ride. It just, it just felt uncomfortable for me. And how about you guys? Uh, first half sucked. The first half was rough as shit. The second half after the milk horse was okay. Uh, it was actually pretty fun. I'm um, not going to lie. Um, the thing is, you just have to brace yourself. So um, I was in the right seat. And if you're in the left seat, just this applies for you. Um, for you. But if you're in the left seat, use your left arm. If you're in your right seat, use your right arm against the side of the car. Um, it's usually how you ride it, but you also want to use that arm as kind of a brace and as sort of extra padding against that seat. You don't. You definitely want to brace for any kind of force that would happen, and you definitely want to keep your head forward. Other than that, you know, it's pretty good. It's pretty fun. I like the inversions. Honestly, they're really fun. I don't even. After riding that, I don't even know if any um, coast manufacturer does his, the loops and inversions better than arrow, to be honest. But anyways, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll get another ride and I'll see if it's bad, but like honestly, I, I like this so far. Cool. Alright guys, we just did Backlot Stunt Coaster and this was the second version I did and I gotta say, for positive G's for a family ride, comparing to the one at Kings Island, I'd say this is actually better in terms of like intensity, but I think the effects are slightly better at Kings Island for what I remember. Oh, nice fire effect right there. That thing never gets sold with these kind of rides. But if only they had the original effects when it was the Italian job, when they had the splash down at the end and even missing the tunnel too. How was it this time? This was really fun. Significantly, significantly better than the one at Kings Island. Oh yeah. Very fun and I remember you weren't so big of the fan at Kings Island, yeah, but you liked the one yeah, at Kings Dominion though. Yeah, this one was great. Blows one at Kings Island out of the water. I actually grayed out on that launch and I actually got some decent nerves. I think it's better than Jersey Devil and Nitro. What did you think, Matt? It's, it's the most underrated family coaster I've ever ridden. Better than King's Island, and I like this more than Skull Mountain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, Backlot Stunt Coaster is definitely one of the best family attractions out there. Yeah, need also, one of these. Also, um, All right, everybody. The moment you've been waiting for. Intimidator 305. I am super pumped to ride this. This is actually, I'm not going to lie, this is actually my most anticipated coaster out of any coasters out there I've ever seen even because I've been watching these POVs for years even when it like was first released and I just wanted to ride it ever since and this is so unreal Anaconda was actually a very solid arrow too you just gotta know how to ride arrows I feel I like the Monte Carlo that they have whatever it's called Monte Claro Monte Carlo um, and there's a non-existent line, like most enthusiasts claim. This is claim. about to be my 100th poster. And it's going to be his 100th, folks. Hell yeah. Gentlemen, start your engine! Wish me luck, guys. I can't wait. I wonder what it's going to be like to black out or gray out. Like, I'm dying to know on this kind of ride. Oh my god, folks. Just in my first ride, I threw a five, and it actually was not as intense as I thought it would be towards the end, but I will say the first drop was unbelievable. I was graying out. I wouldn't say black out, but wow. That was a really good ride. I'm a bit speechless right now. Um... I'm not sure if it's my number one or not right now. I think I might still have still Vengeance ahead of this. 
it's actually really neck and neck with Superman the Ride as well, and believe me, like, I'm speechless at the same time right now, so it's really tough for me to choose what's better, I threw a five or Superman, but who knows. Guys, I definitely need a minute to definitely think about this, but... So it's really neck and neck with Superman the Ride right now because all my good rides I had on Superman this year, the pacing and airtime, it's like, it's tough to choose right now. We're now waiting for front row now, and um, here it goes. Hardly anybody on today. This is the current wafer intimidator even, so. All right, guys. Twisted Timbers time. And man, I'm still not over that front row ride I had on I-305. That thing was unbelievable. So, Mikey. Yeah. What did you think about your ride on I-305 when we did the front row? That was one of the most ridiculous coasters I've ever been on. That intensity just hits you like a wall. It's seriously unreal. I think I might have a new number one after that. Night Rides will burn to it later, but I'm about 90% sure it's my new number one. Oh, I bet. That was insane. Wonderful. Now we're going to be in line for Twisted Timbers, and I think it's a walk-on according to what I know. I don't know. And we got to get lockers. This is the line queue right now. It looks really nice. Look at those ejector moments. Wow. That's pretty cool. Orchard Shed, number four. Orchard Shed, number three. Wow. Looks like it's hauling today. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. Wow. So Twisted Timbers also has the on-ride lockers just like Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Guys, we just got off Twisted Timbers for my first time. I was in second to last seat. Technically, you could say it's the back end. Wow! A lot better than I remember. Those ejector moments are so violent for a small RMC and... I think it might be better than Wicked Cyclone, actually. I mean, I feel like it could add a little more positive G's to it, but the amount of ejector moments I had, though, was just unbelievable, like, speechless. Racer 75 time. This was formerly known as Rebel Yell. Let's see how it goes. Wow. Racer 75 was very solid with the amount of ejector airtime moments I got for this wooden coaster. Um... In my opinion, though, I think it's kind of sad that they changed the name from Rebel Yell to Racer 75. I'm always going to call it Rebel Yell in my eyes. All right, we're about to do Grizzly now, and I heard for this year they actually retract uh, part of the first portion of the ride, I believe by Gravity Group, maybe? But um, I heard over these years Grizzly was supposed to be, like, a really rough wooden coaster, and some really like it, so it's considered a mixed bag. I really like how you're in the woods, too. Very nice. Alright guys, so we're right near where like I believe where shows are or something and the Eiffel Tower and we're actually right by the log plume but right around here I believe is an actual waterfall and I think it actually goes into like a creek as well so all that's around here then you go in the waterfall and then underneath the bridge and then on the other side more water and it leads into like more of a stream so i think it's a real creek anaconda finally reopened after a good thunderstorm and we have mikey and matt in the very last seat
right guys, we're finally gonna do Woodstock Express now. This is the PTC Kitty Coaster. They have one at Kings Island and Carowinds. I've experienced Kings Islands and Carowinds so far. So far, I prefer the one at Carowinds. I've not done Kings Dominions yet, but who knows how much airtime we can get for this kind of kitty coaster. All right, everybody, so we did Whitewater Canyon and the Log Flume, whatever that ride is called again. Shenandoah, oh yeah, Shen yeah, Shenandoah. Yeah, that's what it's called. And I gotta say, Shenandoah was solid. Didn't get as much wet as Whitewater Canyon, which is their Intamin Rapid Ride. Now, Twisted Timbers has reopened after the storm, so let's go have some fun rides on Twisted Timbers. All right, we're next gonna do Racer again. Racer 75, this time we're doing the left side. We did the right side before. It's one of those songs that you think you forgot, but it's one of those songs you cannot. You gotta love hearing Mushroom sing Barbershop. All right, guys, we finally are get to experience now Flight of Fear, the King's Dominion version. Because let me tell you, King's Island's version, why I did Flight of Fear for both years, one of the worst coasters I've ever ridden in my life, and I put it in F tier. Let's see how King's Dominion theming is. And there's like no line, pretty much, and I must say that's similar to King's Island, but I think King's Island has slightly more theming. But I like it though. Well, this is more of the theme of the Flight of Fear, and pretty cool so far. Similar to King's Islands as you were going through the UFO, but um, I don't know. I feel like King's Island had a little more theming, but I still think it's pretty cool for what King's Dominion has. All right, guys, we're about to wait in line for I-305 now after that storm for a while and everything like that, but we just got a Flight of Fear, and I gotta say this time, King's Dominion's version of Flight of Fear, yes, it's jarring, it's not great, but definitely like no headbanging at all, and I had like no body parts being bruised either, because King's Islands, when I went on it for two years, that so brutal. I probably would give Flight of Fear at King's Dominion maybe a C tier raking, actually. Not bad. All right, we're in line for Twisted Timbers now. This is gonna be our third ride on Twisted Timbers, and this is towards nighttime, actually. We did a few rides on I-305, and how was I-305, everybody? It was awesome, man. Hey, guys, I'm in love. It is so good. These all wanna join my vlog. What's your what's your number one ride at King's big, Dominion? Big fan. With the Timbers? I think mine's I threw a five Intimidator. I love Intimidator. All right, guys. So King's Dominion has just about come to an end for tonight, and I gotta say, our last attraction was I threw a five at night. Not we for the last riders of the night as well and that, on I-305. And that was my first front row ride at night. He got front row for his last ride. I was second to, to front row, but I, think I, I had a front row ride. Now. I had a front row ride at night too, and I'm still even like drained from that last ride I had. Dang. Like, Intimidator like really tries to like drain you at the same time, and that thing is no joke. I'm so speechless. It might even potentially be my number one. I, I am not sure I, yet, I but. That was so good. Well guys, King's Dominion was a blast for my very first time. I-305 got me so speechless to the point that it might be my number one coaster. 
So, oh, I don't know when I'll be back to King's Dominion, but hopefully maybe next year if I can manage to do like a tradition where I go to Virginia every year. But we'll see when the time comes. Next video will be Bush Gardens Williamsburg for my first time. Thanks for watching, folks. Please comment and subscribe below, and as always, peace out.